you would think that the Ravens would be like, all right, we started this season off 0-2, but we don't went on a five-game win streak. Ravens flock should be satisfied and happy with that, right? But they were like, no. You would think that after they added Arthur Millette back to the active roster just yesterday, they could be like, all right, Ravens fans, they should chill off of that. We good for the week. But they were like, no. You would think that after we got this great news on Marlon Humphrey, let's read the report from Ian Rappaport. He said, Ravens all-pro cornerback Marlon Humphrey did not did not suffer a major knee injury last week, so it's a safe following test. He's walking around with a little discomfort, but after two interceptions last week, Humphrey's status is up in the air this week, and time will tell how quickly he can recover. So you will think after that, too, after getting that news, that Ravens will be like, mm-hmm. That's good enough. Ravens flock should be straight. No, you would think that after Jalen Alma Davis getting back to practice this week too, after being hurt and being out for a while, you would think that Ravens would be like, no, but here's the kicker. It's this one. That <laughs> We've been waiting on this since last year when he first went down with injury because Last year, Keith Mitchell was killing it. Last year, Keith Mitchell was averaging like 50 yards per carry. Last year, Keith Mitchell was getting involved in a run and a passing game. And last year, Keith Mitchell was an undrafted rookie free agent, and he was killing it like that. You would think that this year, the Baltimore Ravens were like, you know, let's add Derrick Henry. And with all his success, you would think they would be like, oh, Ravens fans, they should be straight off of that. You would think that the Ravens with Derrick Henry and Justice Hill getting it in too. That they'll be, uh, Ravens fans would be straight. But Ravens say, nope, that's not enough because Keaton Mitchell is back. Keaton Mitchell is back. He was back at practice today. They are starting his 21-day window to where he can return to the active roster. So within the next three weeks, Keaton Mitchell <laughs> Man. <laughs> do y'all realize like Ravens are crushing, destroying it right now? Not just in the run in the run game for sure. Yes, Derrick Henry doing his thing, Justice Hill doing his thing, Lamar Jackson getting it in a little bit too in the run game. But Ravens are crushing it in the past game too. Ravens are just, they are playing some of their, some of their, what am I talking about? Ravens are playing their best offensive football ever, ever. They are on historical pace. They are on a historical tear. Ravens have just been amazing on offense. Defense, oh, they got a little catching up to do, but thank goodness for the offense because the offense has been saving the defense Pretty much the majority of the year. And we love to see it. We love to see Lamar Jackson looking like he's going to be MV3 because it's looking like this campaign is going to be his third one. Remember, when we did the interview with Coach Van, who Lamar Jackson mentioned a couple of weeks ago uh, before the game against the Commanders, he said every day before every game, I get on the phone and I pray with Coach Van. And that, that's who we interviewed. He said it. In our interview with him, he talked about how he could see Lamar Jackson getting another MVP this year. He talked about Lamar possibly winning another couple of MVPs, but he said this year he could see Lamar Jackson winning another MVP. And when he said that, I said, hmm, well, I mean, he could, but now we're seeing like, oh, oh, yeah, he could because Lamar Jackson is on another level. And Lamar Jackson being on another level, that has allowed this Baltimore Ravens offense as a whole to be on another level. But just imagine, just imagine if this Baltimore Ravens offense could potentially get even stronger Keith Mitchell's back. Keith Mitchell's back. Well, he ain't back all the way, all the way, but he's back. So he, since he's back practicing, that means it's only a matter of time before he's back on the field, and we get to see that Keith Mitchell with this Derrick Henry, with this Justice Hill, with this offensive line, with this Todd Munkin, with this Lamar Jackson, with this Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, Mark Andrews, who's back too. Isaiah Likely, Charlie caught like Ravens are doing something. And, and this new, this is just excellent. Because we've been so used to for so long, especially as Ravens fans. So even over the past couple of years, I've been so used to getting really bad injury news. Guys being out for a while, guys missing a season. But 
actually started a couple years ago when Ravens made a change to their strength and conditioning coach, and they also hired um, a, a, a Titans coach that was supposed to be good at helping players recover properly from injuries. Ever since then, things have been on the up and up when it's come to Baltimore Ravens and their health overall. Of course, it's been some one-offs here and there, but overall, the Baltimore Ravens have been a lot healthier than they have been in previous seasons. But we love this. We love this for the Ravens. We love this for Keaton Mitchell because we know that he's been waiting. He's been itching to get back out there. I'm sure he's been watching the games and stuff and be like, man, oh, oh, I, oh, I, I would take off. Oh, that would have been a touchdown. Oh, yeah. We know it. And Keaton Mitchell even talked about this. Uh, with Rita, shout out to Rita, the NFL chick, and Glenn Clark uh, on the Arthur Millette show, and, and I know they're going to be doing the show tonight, and it's going to feature Nate Wiggins, but when they had uh, Keith Mitchell as a guest on their show a couple of weeks ago, uh, he talked about how, and again, we know Keith Mitchell's been hurt, so he ain't even been playing, but he talked about how Derrick Henry be making sure that he's on point. Derrick Henry and him be going over different runs and whatnot, go, be, you know, going over different plays and all that. And he said Derrick Henry tried to make sure that Keith Mitchell got a feel for what Derrick Henry's feeling when it comes to the run game. And for Keith Mitchell to get that in just his second year, and he ain't even playing. Derrick Henry ain't got to do that. Derrick Henry could be like, oh, no, I, I'm good. I got it. Me and Justice Hill got it. But Derrick Henry said, no, no, let me put Keith Mitchell on too. Let me take him under my wing too. So that shows you just how great of not only a player Derrick Henry is, but a teammate as well. So for Keaton Mitchell to be able to learn from him and after what he knows already from what we've seen last year, <laughs> it's over for y'all. We talked about Baltimore Ravens offense and just how great they've been. It's been amazing to see it. Uh, so the NFL, they've been recognizing just how great Ravens offense and their offensive players have been. That's why for the fourth week in a row, fourth week in a row, the Baltimore Ravens have the offensive player the AFC offensive player of the week and this week it went to none other than Lamar Jackson uh, who had five touchdowns and 333 all-purpose yards so in week four it was Derrick Henry uh, offensive player of the week in week five it was Lamar Jackson offensive player of the week in week six it was Derrick Henry offensive player of the week in week seven it was Lamar Jackson offensive player of the week so they've been going tic-tac-toe any mini miny mo uh, it's your turn no 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 you got it no 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 you got you got it if it continues we ain't gonna have no problem with that at all ravens are on a five game win streak and we getting so much great news about guys returning and being healthy i know it's making y'all feel good so if it's making team keep it clean feel good i'm feeling good and good just happens to be the sponsor of this video mark ingram always say look at the details good to send you these stylish sunny starting at only 25 dollars a pair and you know i had to get my team keep it clean colors these shades are lightweight they're comfortable and ain't no slip no bounce if you like the more vibrant colors or you like something a little bit more sleek this shade is for everybody and if you want to wear them to just chill or you want to be more active you want to go biking hiking walking running they are good for any type of situation because i mean they do look good. And because they're so affordable, you ain't got to worry about losing or even breaking them. And you can get a pair for every occasion. So if you need a new pair of sunnies, Gooder is giving all of our listeners free shipping. You can go to Gooder.com slash engraving and use code engraving for free shipping. Gooder offers a 30-day money-back guarantee and 100% satisfaction. Again, that's Gooder.com slash engraving and use code engraving for free shipping. So with the Baltimore Ravens having played this past Monday night in their game being on Sunday against the Browns at 1 p.m. Schedule got a little messed up today. So they did acknowledge that we're conducting a late afternoon walkthrough on Wednesday. So the report is a practice estimation. So it may not be all the way accurate. So for any of these players that are not practicing today, don't trip. Don't be too alarmed. You can be, there can be some concern, which I understand. But we ain't got to trip too much. But let's go over it. So uh, Rasheen Ali did not practice. Uh, Jalen Armand Davis, he was limited. But, you know, he's on the way back from injury reserve. Uh, Zay Flowers didn't practice. Malik Harrison was limited. Uh, Marlon Humphrey did not practice. Travis Jones did not practice. Arthur Millett and Keaton Mitchell were both limited. Uh, you know, they were turning from injury. Uh, TJ Tampa didn't practice. Broderick Washington, he was limited. And Nate Wiggins did not practice again. Uh, it's just an estimation, so it ain't nothing to trip about right now, but let's see uh, what goes down. And, and speaking of this game that we got coming up uh, against the Cleveland Browns, uh, we know that it's official. Jamison Winston, uh, he is going to be the starter. I keep calling him Jamison. I'm thinking of the drink, Jamison. Jamison Winston is going to be the starter. So it's 
This got trap written all over it, whether he was going to be starting or not. This is a division game. So, Ravens, they already know. They can't overlook the Browns at all, even though Browns have been doing bad. But Jameis Winston being the starter is not going to be the only change uh, to the Cleveland Browns because it says that Coach Kevin Stefanski, who normally does the play calling uh, for the Browns, he is actually going to give that to the offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey. Uh, so, Ken Dorsey is going to be calling the plays now. I think Ken Dorsey went to Miami. He went to University of Miami when Miami was just – Back when they were just killing it, they were like super dominant back then. And I look like with Cam Ward, they're getting back to that. But anyway, we ain't talking about college right now. Um, so that is something that is a big switch up for the Baltimore Ravens. And hey, like, look, man, Zach Orr, this have have you a legacy game this week? You might as well. And we get like, look, Ravens cornerbacks. Whoever we got playing cornerback this week, they need to hit the jugs machine straight up, man. They need to work on just straight up catching because we miss so many opportunities with interceptions. We miss a lot of opportunities because they can completely change a game around, change a drive around, uh, completely turn around an offense for the worst. So that's what we want as a defense. So Ravens cornerbacks got to get on that. But again, Zach Orr, he got to lock in, man. He, he got to lock in. We cannot have guys running wide open like we do literally every single week. Every single week. Again, to me, it's not a personnel issue. It's a coaching issue. Ravens defense, let this be the confidence boost game for them, for sure, to where they come out and they just shut it all down. I know we're going up against a backup quarterback, but uh, he's a, what, number one and number two overall pick. I believe he's number one overall pick back in his day. Uh, so, Zach Orr, Ravens defense, just come out and shut it down so we could leave this game without a doubt. Because we, we, we could use a non-stressful game where the Ravens are winning and they just blow a team out the water. So, Zach, or are you with us? I hope Hopefully, you are. So, now we hear my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. If you would like to be part of it for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, if you'd like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. Or if you're not, you can just send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Got to give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patron, our guy, Supreme Billy. So shout out to Supreme Billy SB. And you know what? Let's start off with some questions from Mr. Supreme Billy. He said the following. What's up, Engraving? It's been a while. Oh, what's up, Bill? He said, I've been watching videos since the 2018 draft when we traded for the 32nd pick for Lamar Jackson. Hope all is well. Hey, I appreciate that. Because that was, wow, that's uh, over six years ago. So I appreciate that, man. Thank you. <laughs> for real, man. I mean, we was in Chicago for that draft. We was in Chicago, and I was watching the draft. I was streaming from my phone and watching the draft. Was I watching it on TV or from another phone? I don't even remember what the setup was, but we were streaming on the channel from Chicago. But anyway, um, he said, I feel like as Ravens fans, we always get caught up in the moment. Right now, as a team, we're doing well. We usually do good during the regular season, but when the playoffs come, like you say, we lose our identity from the looks of it. I feel like we will see the Chiefs again, unfortunately. No, that ain't no unfortunately. Because when you got an issue that you've been dealing with, when you got a problem that you've been struggling whenever you face it, running away from it don't, ain't going to make it no better. Ain't going to make it no better. No, you got to face it head on. You got to deal with it. And you got to figure out a way to get over whatever that hurdle is. That hurdle is the Chiefs. Now, look, if, if playoffs come around and Ravens make the playoffs and somebody else take the Chiefs out, okay, no problem. But if nobody else does, it's up to the Ravens to get this thing done, man, one way or another. Like you, you cannot run from the Chiefs. But anyway, back to his question. He said, I have faith in our defense, but we let Baker Mayfield get back in the game. And with the Bengals, Joe Burrow, he threw that ball all over us. Our offense produces so good this year, but of course our defense lacks. We are winning games, but I'm not sure if the way we are winning will transition good when playoffs start. Those Chiefs always got the answer for us, and we only get one shot. Do you think our current defense will take us all the way? Mm. Well, the current defense, the way they've been playing, they could. They could, and I know it sounds insanely crazy, but look at how the Ravens have been winning games. Their offense has been going off. So if the Ravens want to go all the way in the current defense, if they stay like this, which we hope they, 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 they don't, we, we need them to improve. They, we can't, like, they can win in spite of the defense, but we want the defense to be much better than we've been seeing. Next question came from another Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy, Martin, and he said, I'm going to say something I haven't said in a long time. I'm good with our wide receiver room. I like our guys. Hold up. His, make sure that this ain't Harbaugh. Harbaugh, you a Team Keep It Clean patron? 
I know it, John. I, I appreciate you, though, John. Thank you, man. Anyway, my guy said, um, he said, while I've said before, I prefer not trading for a wide receiver because I don't want to disrupt our ecosystem that we have built. We got three great tight ends, three great wide receivers. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Great wide receivers. However, the only reason I'd be okay with getting another wide receiver is because of the possibility of injury. Now, I, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't say we have three great wide receivers. I wouldn't say great. As for three, I, I wouldn't say all that. Uh, but anyway, continuing. He said, um, I'd be okay with getting another wide receiver because of the possibility of injury. I literally just knocked on wood as I said that. We got a little scared with Zay, and we saw what happened to the Tampa guys. Don't get it twisted, though. I don't want to bring in someone who's going to take away targets from our guys. Bateman has, a, has uh, stepped up big, and this is his chance to show every team out there that he is just as good as those guys that you would rather have than him. Look at what happened with Devontae Adams. He was traded and literally had no connection with Aaron Rodgers. He literally looked lost out there. Now, with that, I wouldn't worry about that because they, they, they definitely going to get that connection. It's just a matter of time. They've been apart for a couple of years, so you can see why it's a little bit rusty, but they definitely going to get it back. He, he said, I'm not saying don't trade, but I'm saying don't mess up what's working. I also think trading could be good, so when we can play, uh, keep away from the Chiefs. I have mixed feelings, but I just don't want to mess up the chemistry we have built. You always say, why not uh, get even better when it comes to the wide receiver? I just think that we should take that same philosophy and apply it to the cornerback position. How, did you feel about, how would you feel about why not get an even better approach with the wide receiver room is how some of us feel about the cornerback room. Yeah, I, I, I get that. Um, I, I was, I was, hey, do both. But I mean, you, you getting Jalen Armand Davis back, right? You getting Arthur Millette back too. So you ain't no other receivers coming through. So like, again, I, I say why not? Because again, the, the reason I say for wide receiver, and I and I I get both sides of the argument. But again, we we saw what happened. Like you mentioned, when they went down, we were all like, uh oh, oh, oh no, uh oh, what's gonna happen now? Because it would have been Nelson Aguilar as our other wide receiver. Nelson Aguilar not bad, but would you want him to be your starting wide receiver if somebody were to go down? And you hopefully, hopefully nobody goes down. Hopefully nobody gets hurt. But stuff happens, as we know. Uh, people get nicked up. It's a long season. So why not stay ready so you ain't got to get ready? On the defensive side of the ball, oh, they, they ready. They got plenty of cornerbacks over there. Uh, but, again, I think it's more a scheme thing than anything uh, with the defense. Now, he also said, we got to admit at this point, Brandon Stevens is not the same guy from last year. And how are we supposed to believe that? He is just going to magically figure it out. I know it's not a talent issue when it comes to the defense, but this secondary has gotten cooked every single game by every quarterback that has played them. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Except Josh Allen. He ain't cook us. Uh, every quarterback that has played them knows where uh, 21 is at every throw, and they throw it at him, and it works. I don't care that Brandon Stevens is always there. The fact that it all, all the biggest plays come from the opposing quarterbacks uh, come against him and Marcus Williams and Eddie Jackson. Something has to be done to improve this secondary. We have the worst one in the league. The playoffs will be here before you know it. And think about if the playoffs started today, how are you going to feel about this current defense? We all know they aren't firing Zach or midseason. It's been seven weeks, and nothing has changed defensively. So, uh, we are going to have to improve the secondary through trading because I don't see the flip switch all of a sudden and the secondary just remembers how to play. They couldn't cover a pallet of Miller Light 30s. It could be wide open in the end zone. Oh, my goodness. My, my guy, he ain't playing on that secondary. And I get why. Um, but Marcus Williams, he ain't going nowhere. Eddie Jackson, he could possibly. We'll see. But um, I would say just you got to change up the lineup. Change up the lineup at safety. Um. Marlon Humphrey, we'll see if he ends up being out there. I could see them like just resting him this week, just for the long term, not rushing him, uh, even if he's ready to go. Um, but yeah, I, I could see some some benchings, some, some switch ups on the defense. But other than that, I mean, hey, I don't know, man. I don't know. Zach Orr got to get some stuff together. Just make stuff basic, make it more vanilla. Have everybody do a good job at doing their job, basic job. And then go from there. Then add stuff, add more wrinkles and stuff here and there. He said, also, though I might disagree with you on different topics, we both uh, want what we think is going to push this team to the Super Bowl. Whether that be trading for a wide receiver or a defensive player, at the end of the day, we both just want the Ravens to win the Super Bowl. Sorry, I, I hope I ain't come off as rude or anything. I ain't mean anything. I just want this team to win the Super Bowl. I'm team keep it clean, so I'm here with you, even if we disagree. Just like disagreeing with the Ravens sometimes. Hey, sometimes they prove us wrong. Sometimes they prove us right. Oh, nah, you, you ain't come across as rude at all. Oh, I, I get you. I'm with you all day. And that's, how that, that's, that, and that's what it is at both the beginning and end of the day. Um, us as Ravens fans, it happens with all fan bases, but us as Ravens fans, we all going to have our different ways and different viewpoints that we see stuff like. Some people want this. Some people want that. But 
at the beginning and end of the day, we all just want the team to win. Get him now. Next question came from my guy, Mark JG. He said, Engraven, I'm at work and my coworker told me Nuke is on KC and I had to check. My goodness, he was right. Right now, I don't care. Go get Cooper Cup or DK. I know they've been dealing with injuries, but go get one of them. Probably Cooper Cup and I somewhat called, called him it. Uh, seriously, if the rich get richer, then let's write our check. It's not a slight at bay. I was hyped for him and he'll continue. And you see Zay got hurt. Anything can happen. Go get Cooper Cup now. Imagine him and Bateman with Zay. We got tight ends, but let's just get more weapons. I want to go toe to toe with KC at 120%. Two Hall of Famers playing pitch and catch is not good. And you see how our defense is playing, which leads me into this quick point. Me and you talked about it. I don't want any more secondary players because if you get more players, that is going to add to the confusion, man. The, ooh. Ooh, I, I ain't think about that. And that's a possibility. It's also possible that they won't they will be less confused, but that I didn't think about that. He said the source is between Zach Orr and the green dot and how responsibility is being coached. I wonder if Roe is having trouble understanding, which may lead to him looking slow to comprehend. Uh, at the point you're reading and reacting to what you see and know what you've been coached to do. Oh my goodness, you bringing out some stuff today. Wow. Said, because if you don't understand the play call and got to diagnose the play at the same time, that's going to be overload and that'll slow you down. If we add Zadarius Smith, Max Crosby, and Miles, I won't be mad. Now, can we reasonably pull off a Cooper Cup and Zadarius trade? I think so. Make the rich richer. They could. I think they could. They, they, they could for sure if they wanted to. Um, Zadarius Smith, he'll go for obviously a lot cheaper than Cooper Cup would. Um, but Cooper Cup, look, Rams, like, they trying. They trying. And they just said today he was healthy. Uh, he had a full practice and whatnot. So I said he probably going to put on one last show uh, on Thursday Night Football before he ends up getting traded to whoever his new team is going to be. Um, but Cooper Cup is ready. Uh, they, they all know that he's going to be out of there soon enough. And with the Rams saying, oh, no, we're we going to take on the chunk of, the, of his salary. It's like, oh, okay, okay. Um, so, yeah, and with DeAndre Hopkins, like, yeah, Kansas City Chiefs, they – I mean, we knew they wanted a wide receiver. Uh, and they said that Hollywood could possibly come back for playoffs, too. So they can get him back. Rasheed Rice, I, I don't know what his status is. But anyway, um, so, yeah. And, and KC, like, it's like, the, and they 6-0. and I like that. They 6-0, they, they undefeated, but they still like, hold up. We could use another weapon. Let, let's go get one. And they got in, went and got in somebody who was once the best wide receiver in the entire league. So that's a good move for KC. And it's, it's so important that even though you're having success, reps help me out a little bit too, but even though you're having success, it's nice that they still, they smart to keep on adding. He said, Engraven, I ain't check up on you. How are you, you and the family team keep it clean? Oh, we good, man. We good. He said, I just had to get this in, man. I know I've been emailing a lot. appreciate everything uh, you all do. Uh, shout out to the Bucks because they are a great team and put up a fight. Shout out to Bate because I think he's coming on now and he's only 24. So... Let's build this core up even more. Go get Cooper, and we good. And like Cooper Cup, better be on the way to be more. I'm out. Is this the final piece? Next question came from my boy, Chef Boy RT. He said, I hope your family doing great. Off the rip, I want to say I appreciate the videos. I've been a subscriber since your old channel with the Madden video. Oh, it took you way back. Shout out to Madden. I, I appreciate that, though, man. Thank you. He said, used to watch those on my free time in middle school. I'm 21 now. You're OG, man. It's crazy. I've been watching for so long, yet this is my first time sending a question. Oh, that's, whoa, that's, <laughs> you, ooh, now you, you really, uh, that's, that's crazy, man, I appreciate that a lot, man, he said, okay, time to get down to business, with the Chiefs trading for De DeAndre Hopkins this morning, and with the report coming out saying that the Chiefs actually tried to trade for Cooper Cup before trading for D-Hop, do you think the Baltimore Ravens should make the call, me personally, I was a let Zay and Bateman eat kind of guy, unless it was for DK Metcalf, I was thinking the Ravens would go defense like always and see what it would take for Max Crosby or Miles Garrett, but after hearing that, they're actually calling about Zadaria Smith, I don't want him back in Baltimore. He switched up, and I won't forget that. Oh, you <laughs> it's business, man. It's business. If he can make the Ravens better, go for it. But anyway, good thing. He said, with Bateman and Zay doing great, Mandrew's looking good and likely patiently waiting for his turn again. Why not become unstoppable and go get Cooper Cup? I like that. While DK Metcalf is the trade I've been hoping for for the last five years, <laughs> we should have drafted him to begin with. It doesn't seem likely. So what would you do if you were EDC, and what do you think EDC would actually do? Oh, if I was EDC... I'm I'm swinging for the fences, man. I, I'm going for it all. I, I'm going like Rams style, like all out draft picks. Ah, right, cool. No, let's try to win now. Uh, so I will go for a Max Crosby. See what the Raiders talking about. I would talk to the Browns about Miles getting. Obviously not both, but I'm just talking to both of them to see what I what what they will be willing to take for those players. Because those will be my first and foremost. If it's for defense now for wide receiver, yeah, I would talk to Mike McDonald. Be like, hey, Mike, y'all ain't been looking too good, my friend. What about DK Metcalf? He ain't, he, ain't, he ain't that good anyway. What y'all want for? What you want for DK? Because that, that's like, I feel like he would be, a, a, because he brings two things in one. He brings a jump ball wide receiver. 
And he brings that deep threat too. Obviously, Rashad Bateman and Zay Flowers, they could be deep threats as well. But they're not jump ball wide receivers. DK Metcalf gives you that too. Is he the best route runner? No. But they don't even really need him to be. So that like that would be a really, really good move. So yeah, that's what I'll do. What do I think EDC will do? Um, you know what? I can't even call it. I can't even call it. I didn't expect him to be interested in Derrick Henry last year. And he was trying to get that done. So I feel like with EDC, um, a lot of times they can do stuff that's uh, that's predictable. But sometimes when it comes to trades, he does stuff out of nowhere that I don't even, I don't even see coming. And I'm like, oh, okay, EDC. He said, with Bateman and Zay doing great, Mandrew looking good. Oh, no, I already read that part. He said, uh, you're the GOAT. No, that that is false information right there. Uh, but he said, go Ravens. And just like Marcus Williams will <laughs> Eddie boy. He said, just like Marcus Williams will be in a Cooper Cup trade package, I'm out. Offense or defense? Next question came from my guy Tyreek. He said, What's up, Ben Graven? Hope everything's going well with you and the fam. I've been watching your videos for some time now and I feel like I'm ready to ask some questions. You've been ready for that, Tyreek. But I appreciate you sending this in. He said, After watching the Ravens Monday night game against the Buccaneers, I realized something other than communication issues. I honestly don't think our past defense is playing that bad. Our defense came up with two interceptions, which it really could have been three. I think our problem is our pass rush. Baker Mayfield had three years in the pocket, which led to Baker to sit back and scan the field. That's a good point. And, and that's weird because earlier the, this season, the pass rush was doing really, really good. Then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. I don't know what changed. But he said, I have played cornerback all my life, and I can tell you that you can only guard someone for so long. Uh, playing defense is like a working car. When you have missing parts, it just doesn't work right. Okay, my guy came with the analogies. I love me some good uh, analogies, man. That, that was fire. He said, to switch to the offensive side of the ball, I know my guy Bate had a heck of a game, but Zay Flowers did get banged up for a little bit, and that had me questioning our depth at wide receiver. Nelly is okay for a veteran wide receiver, but isn't really like a set target. After him, we only got Tylen Wallace, Devontae Walker, and Deontay Hardy, who's already on IR. And not to mention, all of those guys offer special teams. If you were Eric DaCosta with the trade deadline coming up, would you rather trade for a pass rusher like a Max Crosby and a Miles Garrett, or would you trade for a wide receiver like a Corlin Sutton and a Cooper Cup? Sorry for the really long question. Just want to know your thoughts. And just like Nate Robinson fighting Jake Paul, I'm out. Oh, yeah, he did get knocked out a couple years ago. Well, that boy got knocked out by a YouTuber, but they just a podcaster. Anyway, um, if I was Eric DaCosta, y'all know me. If I was Eric DaCosta, it'd be receiver. I, it would be receiver, and I would have to have a, a long talk with Zach Orr and tell him, like, look, like, look, I went and got you Yannick and Gakwe, and he looked good early. What happened? Adafi away, he was looking good early. What happened? You got David Ajabo, the guy got one of the nicest little spin moves in the game. Where is it at? Why are we not closing? What is the issue? Sign uh, Namdi Matabike to that big deal. Got Travis Jones. Brought back Michael Pitt. Like, what? Whoa, what's up? We got Arthur Millette back on the roster now. Like, come on. Uh, I know Marlon Humphrey going to be out. Nate Wiggins. Like, what's up? You got Super Duper Kyle. You got two Super Duper Kyles. Super Duper Kyle and Super Duper Kyle 2.0. With Kyle Vanoi. Like, well, I would, so, yeah, I would go wide receiver, but I would have a long talk with Zach or to let him know, like, we got to fix this. 